antidepressant pharmacologic treatment has historically focused on the uh, neurotransmitters of norepinephrine and uh, serotonin. <clears throat> and virtually all of the marketed and uh, clinically effective antidepressants are variations on selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, selective norepinephrine, selective or combined SNRIs. Um, <clears throat> there's been efforts, intensive, numerous efforts made by companies and researchers to identify novel mechanisms of action like CRF antagonists or the uh, um, neurokinin subtype 1 receptor antagonist, um, but none has been successful. Uh, there was a serendipitous finding of the effect of ketamine, uh, a drug that's used parenterally as a dissociative anesthetic, uh, mostly in children or burn victims, um, to treat treatment-resistant depression, and the effects were dramatic dramatically therapeutic. So um, in the wake of that observation and uh, publication, um, there was an effort to try and develop more uh, easily administrable forms of ketamine. And S-ketamine is the result of that. Uh, Janssen, Johnson & Johnson uh, has developed it as an intranasal inhalant form that could be administered non-invasively on a frequent basis, um, and so it now offers another means, more practical means, to use this really groundbreaking new therapeutic mechanism for depression. The problem is, is that, <clears throat> uh, and I'm not complaining that it's been uh, developed and now approved by the FDA or about to be approved by the FDA for marketing and clinical use, but the research base on which we have definitive data to demonstrate the exact dosing parameters, the frequency administration, the duration of how long it should be administered, um, and what are the relative safety issues have not been uh, identified, have not been uh, uh, studied. And it's a question of really practice leaping ahead of research because research takes long time to do and is dependent on funding availability and the NIH is not funding very much and the pharmaceutical companies are funding only limited things that are in their specific product development interest. So it falls to Janssen and J&J &J to now are following the approval to fund phase four studies which would determine who should get it, what are the optimal doses, modes of administration, and how long should they take it? Um, if somebody has treatment-resistant depression, historically, after medications have failed, they've gone to ECT. Um, now they have ketamine. And if ketamine works, then the question is, well, um, what's the continuation treatment? Do you switch to an SRI or an SNRI? Um, do you keep taking ketamine on a regular basis? Uh, and if you do ketamine on a regular basis, again, the dosing, frequency, duration questions have not been answered. So uh, the doctors are out there on their own trying to improvise, which is you know understandable and uh, they'll do in a very judicious way, I'm sure. But the problem is, is it would be better if we were guided by data and had clearly developed treatment guidelines.